The cheers for Denny Hamlet's a home game for him from Virginia. 112,000 plus here in Richmond. 33rd straight sellout for this track. Welcome back to NASCAR on Fox and thanks for being with us. Virginia for lovers and for racers. There are three drivers in tonight's race from the state, including the points leader, the pole sitter, Elliot Sadler, who starts from row four. Jeff Burton has led more laps in Richmond than at any other track. Denny Hamlet, who grew up about 15, 20 miles from here, had a busy Friday in Richmond in the afternoon. He captured the pole. And then later, he won the nationwide race. Our Matt Yoakum is with Denny Hamlet. Chris, every driver has the ultimate place or race to win. Last night, Denny Hamlin scored the nationwide series victory. And if that was Indy, tonight's race, would this be the Daytona 500 for you? This is it. This is as big as it gets for uh, this whole uh, FedEx uh, Express team. And uh, just uh, excited to get going. Starting to get some stomach pains here. I hope it's not butterflies. <laughs> All right, well, he won last night. He's hoping for his second sweep of 2008. He pulled off the truck cup weekend at Martinsville. Dick Berger, and he's hoping for some big success here tonight. Uh, indeed, and so is the current point leader, Jeff Burton, who came from South Boston, Virginia, and who has won at both of the Virginia racetracks. Bigger to win at home? I think it is. I, I mean, it it, uh, it means a lot. I mean, it's it's uh, you're racing in front of the people that watch you grow up as a race car driver, but more importantly, as a person, you know, a lot of these people watch Ward and I and my brother Brian grow up and you know we did a lot of stupid things so I'm sure that, I'm sure that uh, they, they look at us and wonder how the world did they get there but it's uh, it does mean a lot best of luck tonight thank you. Chris Myers all right thank you Dick our senior reporter of Virginia <laughs> one of the original 13 colonies Dick Bergen one of the original 13 people on that <laughs> planet. oh we, we kid you know why we kid <laughs> right. oh my I didn't know he was still listening I'm yeah, sorry didn't know anybody <laughs> knew that. Sure. Hey, all right hey, uh, uh, Daryl how about consistency for Jeff Burton he's the only driver to, mm -hmm. to at least lead and finish every lap so far this season here's what worries me about Jeff Burton all right. he's got to qualify better you cannot start in the back every week and expect to dodge those bullets and get to the front and keep that point lead. Got to get the qualifying act together. Well, if he doesn't look out right now, the guy that's on the pole tonight, the way he's been charging up to the points, remember he had problems early part of the season, 32nd in points, now all the way up to fourth, and he is definitely, I think, on a tear. Denny Hamlin has gone from 32nd in points all the way up to fourth, so he is rapidly rising upward. Time for NASCAR news and notes, and reports were circulating around the garage this afternoon that Bobby Labonte had agreed on a contract extension with Richard Petty Enterprises, but Jeff Hammond spoke with the former Cup champ who told him it's not the truth until you hear it from me. Meanwhile, Greg Biffle recently seen chatting with the folks over at Richard Childress Racing. RCR going to have that fourth team, but we've learned that the driver of the 16 car says he's 99% sure he will re-sign with Roush Fenway Ford. Biffle's been in the top 10 in points all season long. And Roush Fenway did lock up Carl Edwards to a three-year contract extension beyond this year, starting at about $6 million a year. And smiles all around because Edwards has crew chief Bob Osborne back tonight after his six-race suspension. Kevin Harvick, Inc. has aggressively implemented his own random drug testing program for his company. This follows the Aaron Pike admission in the truck series. NASCAR setting up a committee to study the sports policy as well. And Eddie Gossage at Texas Motor Speedway offered Junior $100,000 to drive at his IndyCar race in June. Earnhardt considered it and then said, quote, he thinks I'm a cheap date, I guess. <laughs> okay. Uh, and due to the uh, high prices at the pump, gas and go is now ethanol and go. We're just moving along. I have Would the you question. Drive that car for fifty thousand. All right. Remember, I drive it for fifty million. Oh, you're, okay. you're on the clock, and no one knows the contents, not even Paula Abdul, of these questions. Daryl, for you, pay, you'll get that on the way home. <laughs> a lot of dri a lot of drivers call Richmond their favorite track. So, what is there to like so much about this place? And the motto is racing perfection. What do they mean? Well, it's the right size. It's fast. It's a, it's a three-quarter mile track got a lot of good speed so you get this, the sensation of I'm going fast but you got a lot of places you can pass good places to pass set up passes the crew chiefs love this track really do because again they can work on the car they can get on the driver and get him up on the wheel and make a big difference all right Jeff for you now that the car of tomorrow is safer it's the car of now will drivers take more risks we saw that Michael McDowell thing and he walked away oh these drivers once they start figuring this race car out and they understand they can beat and bang and not knock themselves out of the race you better watch out. 
They got bad habits. Got to be careful. I, I tell you, I keep saying this over and over again. We're getting too comfortable with this safety thing and where we are with these cars. Better watch out. All right, uh, Daryl, uh, what's happened to the pole sitter? All nine races won by dri drivers uh, that were not on the pole. Is there a different philosophy mindset there? Is it the new car? Uh, it should be an advantage. You get that number one pit spot down there. It should pay off, but only four times has it paid off on this new configuration. So I believe this cat there will get it done tonight, though. He's the man. Yeah, that, things will definitely be changing tonight. He is going to be up on the wheel. Forget the points. It's all about pride. All right, Jeff, uh, they said that Juan Pablo Montoya gained a lot of respect among the drivers last week, including Kyle Busch. What about that street cred for him? The what? Well, they call it street cred. You know, in other words, you're gaining oh. respect, that type of thing. Did he get it or not? Some I guys... think he did. Again, he did a really good job. He's been racing better this year. A lot of people maybe haven't really noticed this, but I think he's more comfortable. But last week, he really showed me something running a racetrack that he really shouldn't be that good at. Yeah. What I like about him is what you see is what you exactly. get. All right, Daryl, who, who should Jack Rouse consider to be his number one driver? <laughs> the guy he just signed. Carl Edwards. Carl Edwards. Hey, Carl is the guy. I say it over and over again. He's the guy I would go. He's my go-to guy. I love Matt. I love. I love all those guys. But Carl is the man. All right. Kenseth has the championship, though, right? All right. Jeff. Carl Edwards gets his new crew chief. Actually, his old crew chief back. Bob Osborne after the suspension. What difference does that make, especially for this race? He got his blankie back. You might say <laughs> that right there. He got his comfort guy because this man, when they put them together originally, they were very good. They made it up. You might say matched up really well. And I think that's the key thing is. That he has a guy now that he can have all the confidence in to get the rest of this year done. Carl did win at Texas I know, without him. I right, know, uh, but it doesn't matter. Right. Daryl, uh, the success of Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin, does it put any more pressure on Tony Stewart to win a race as part of that team? Mm -hmm. Well, I wonder if that would have anything to do with him wanting to leave. I'm not sure about that. Uh, he says it's the best it's ever been at Joe Gibbs Racing. But uh, he's 30-something, and these other boys are 20-something, and he's looking, to the, he's looking to his future, not theirs. All right, we're up against the clock. Yes or no, Jeff, will Martin Truex uh, end up with another team beyond DEI? They said they picked up the option. I think he'll be somewhere else. I don't think he's going to stay at DEI. I don't think okay. they, they picked up the option. He yeah, didn't. He did. Daryl studies AT&T. He studies, <laughs> he studies <laughs> DEI all the time. If you want to play AT&T's Fantasy Thanks, Racing Chris. Challenge, <laughs> text in the car number you think he's going to win at 2258. <laughs> play all season long. You could win $31,000 or other great prizes. Next time I'll, I'll give serious, you, you? Next time I'll give you more time for DEI. <laughs> he wants to talk about that, Dale Earnhardt Incorporated. All right, tell us, uh, we're going to see those uh, brake rotors get red hot, but what about the, the tempers? Oh, well, th this is one of those places where you hit me once, I'm going to hit you twice. That's kind of how it goes here, and it's easy to do. You get down in that turn one, get nerfed a little bit, you get mad, and you retaliate. Retaliating here is not a good thing. This ain't Talladega, but a lot of guys got a little bit upset at Talladega. Payback time. All right, Daryl heading up to the booth to join Larry and Mike for the play-by-play -play broadcast. Jeff and I will watch here from the Hollywood you. Hotel, and we'll count you down to the start of the race. The faces of the competitors are ready to roll here in Richmond. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, we're glad you're tuning in to NASCAR on Fox.